Color management can be a complicated topic. Recently I wanted to edit and color grade this Blender animation in DaVinci Resolve because it has better tools for that stuff. But there is some conflicting information out there as far as what the best method is. But in this video, we're going to solve the color management problem and even set up some drag and drop presets that handle everything for us. If you're familiar with 3D software, you know there's a few options when it comes to rendering, and EXR image sequences are generally the best practice because it preserves the raw luminance and color data, giving us the best flexibility in post. We can actually make meaningful adjustments to the render without losing any data. But similar to raw files you'd get from a camera, they don't look quite right unless you process them. Rendering a format like PNG on the other hand will look right, but a lot of that luminance and color data gets compressed because it's optimized for viewing on a display. If you want to make adjustments, you can't do much. The highlights get clipped and you have a lot less flexibility in post-processing. In this case, PNGs are like final display image files, whereas EXRs are more like intermediate data files. Which is why we choose OpenEXR or EXR Multilayer if we want to make changes in post or bring it to a program like Resolve. I typically render OpenEXR as it preserves data and file sizes are way smaller than PNG if you use the DWA a or DWAB codec. 16-bit or 32-bit will work just fine. 16-bit is more than enough in most cases. And once rendered, you won't be able to just preview these files like you might a PNG, but that's totally fine. We can just open a new project in Resolve and drop our files in. Just hitting Ctrl A to select all and dropping it into the media pool or timeline. It will look different from the 3D viewport because it's in linear Rec. 709 color space. Not meant for viewing, but storing data. These view transforms like Filmic, AGX, have no effect on the output when rendering EXR. And that's perfect because it's really easy to replicate those here in Resolve, and rendering it this way gives us a lot more flexibility. The easiest way to get these colors looking right is by opening the image sequence in the Fusion page, we can press Shift and Space to add a node, and the node we want is called OCIO Color Space. And this node uses a file in Blender's file directory to properly transform the color spaces. You can hit Browse here and open the folder where your program files are, probably your C drive if you're on Windows. My file path is Blender Foundation, Blender 4.2, 4.2, Data Files, Color Management, and we can select the config.ocio file. And with that selected, the annoying part is done. And now we have some nice drop-down menus to choose from. Our source color space in this case is Linear Rec. 709, and we have a lot of options when it comes to output color space. There's Filmic, AGX, you can change the levels of contrast, and this Kronos PBR one can look pretty interesting depending on the render. And now we have a pretty nice looking final display with minimal effort, and you can even make some minor changes by adding a color corrector node. And you can adjust the exposure while it's still in the linear color space. But there's arguably a better way of doing this entirely in the color page if you want more granular control over how the final image looks. And I'll show that now. Just like processing in-camera footage from RAW to display, we're going to follow a similar process for our 3D render, preserving all of the RAW data generated from the render engine. But in order to get a nice looking final display, you can hit the little cogwheel in the bottom right to open the project settings, and I'm going to leave everything default, but we want to make sure that the color science is set to DaVinci YRGB, and under image scaling you can change the resize filter to bilinear or bicubic to prevent any unwanted R artifacts if you plan on scaling the image. And now to start processing this render, we can open the color page at the bottom. We can see the clip that we imported, and by default there will be a corrector node. The first thing we want to do is change the color space from Linear Rec. 709 to DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, which is just an intermediate color space that's meant for grading in Resolve. And the best way to change the color space is by going to the Effects tab in the top right, and you can search for Color Space Transform. And we can just drag and drop it on our node here. And all we need to do is set the input color space to Rec. 709 and Linear. You can start typing the letters to pull it up faster. And the output color space to DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. And we can set our tone mapping here to None. And now everything that happens before this node is in the Linear Rec. 709 space. And everything that happens after is in DaVinci Wide Gamut, which is our working space. But now to go from our working space to a final display, we need to add another color space transform. You can right click the first node and hit add serial, 
or you can just hit Alt S to add another node. And I'll drag and drop another color space transform from the effects tab. And now the input color space for this node is DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. And the output color space will be Rec 709 and Gamma 2.2, which is what displays perfectly on most screens. And Resolve will automatically check this Apply Forward OOTF option, which is exactly what we want. And we'll set our tone mapping to DaVinci just to make sure everything looks right. I'm going to right click my first node here to rename it to linear to DWG and the second node I'll label DWG to display just to keep things organized. And now our node graph is broken up into three different color spaces. Linear on the left, intermediate in the middle, and display on the right. And what's really cool about this setup is that the linear color space gives us the maximum amount of flexibility when it comes to light values. I can right click our linear to DWG node, and I can add a serial node before and rename it to exposure. And when I open the curves panel to adjust the exposure by sliding left or down, you can see how much data we have to work with. You can also use the gain wheel in the primaries panel or the global exposure in the HDR panel to make adjustments with a lot of flexibility. The difference is most obvious when you try to compare it to doing the same thing with a PNG. We just have more luminance data to work with. You'll want to keep the exposure adjustments before the first color space transform while it's in linear Rec. 709 because that's when it will have the most data to pull from. Once it gets converted to DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, it won't have the same flexibility when it comes to light values, but this is where we want to do our main color correction. So I can add a node after linear to DWG while it's in our working space, and maybe I want to adjust the custom curves a bit to add some contrast or mess around with the color wheels, you can use whatever color grading techniques you want. You can disable the node by clicking the bottom left corner, or right click to reset it completely. For general color grading tips, I recommend checking out Colin Kelly on YouTube. He has a ton of videos I find really helpful. But if you're more interested in a one-click color grading solution, and I don't blame you, I'm going to show you how to set that up as a drag and drop preset in just a minute. You can add more nodes for further adjustments, but for now we're going to save this node tree as a template so we don't need to set it up every time we want to manually grade a render. So I'll just rename this node CC because it will be our first color corrector, and I'll reset everything except the color space transforms to make it a blank template. And once that's done, I can right click the preview window and hit grab still. And if I open the gallery in the top left, I can see the still I just grabbed, which has all of our node tree data. And you can just drag this into the power grades tab here, and now it will be available to use across all of your projects. I can double click under the numbers here to rename this one to EXR grade. So if I have another EXR render I want to work on, all I need to do is open the color page, go to the power grades tab, and drag the EXR grade into my node workspace, and now I can instantly start finding the right exposure and developing the grade I want. The color management is already handled, and we can just start doing the fun stuff. But if you're not into manually color grading, now we're going to set up a one-click power grade that handles the color management and gives us a nice looking display. Gleb Alexandrov and Joe Ganko recently developed a LUT pack that's perfect for this. Huge thank you to them. I'll leave a link to his channel where you can grab those LUTs, and I'll show you how to install them now. So I'm on Gleb Alexandrov's Patreon here where these LUTs are free to download, and I'm just going to download the View Transform LUTs right here. Once downloaded, we just have to extract them, and back in Resolve, I can open up the project settings in the bottom right, and hit Open LUT Folder where all of the LUTs are stored. And I can just right click to add a new folder. I'll call it Blender LUTs, and drag these LUTs into the folder. And now I can close that and hit Update Lists in Resolve. And now those LUTs are available anytime we open DaVinci Resolve. Now we just need to set up the right nodes for color management. So I have a new EXR file here in the color page. We start the same way by dropping a color space transform on our first node. The input color space is still linear Rec. 709, but this time the output color space is RE Wide Gamut 4 and RE Log C4, because that's how the LUTs are configured. It's important that output color space is correct. And we can set our tone mapping here to none. Now we can hit Alt S to add another node, and this is where we can apply the LUT. You can access all of the LUTs by opening the LUTs tab in the top left. You can also access them by right-clicking the node, go down to LUT, Blender LUTs, 
And now we see all of the different view transforms that we can choose from. I recommend trying all of them to see what works best. For this example, I'll choose AGX Resolve Bombastic because it looks pretty cool with this image. And with that applied, we pretty much have a nice looking display right away. And you could stop here and just save this as a preset so you can drag and drop it. But since this is color managed correctly, we can even make more adjustments if we want without breaking the image. So I'll just rename these nodes for organization. So just like before, I can add an exposure node while it's still in linear rec 709 space to give us the best result. And if I want to make more adjustments, I can add color corrector nodes after the first color space transform while it's in logarithmic color space to make any changes I want without breaking the image. Maybe I want to dial in the saturation for example, and everything just works. And if you end up with a grade that you like and you want to save it as a preset, all you need to do is right click the preview window to grab a still, open the gallery tab in the top left, and drag that still into your power grade tab. You can double click to rename it whatever you want, I'll call this one custom AGX, and now it's available to drag and drop on any EXR sequence you bring into Resolve instantly which is super convenient and obviously saves us a lot of time while still giving us a ton of control over how the final image looks. And if you like this workflow, you can start to build up a whole library of unique color managed power grades that you can instantly choose from on any project. I would recommend labeling them to stay organized and maybe even make a folder structure within this power grades tab. Anything you put in the power grades tab will be available across all of your projects. And I ran through this pretty quickly. If you want to learn more, I'll leave some links in the description. Gleb Alexandrov has a super comprehensive course, and Jacob Holliday gave a really awesome talk at a recent Blender conference breaking down all of these concepts. This video wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for their amazing free resources. In short, this video was just setting up some color grading templates that handle all of the color management for us from any 3D software. That way we can just get started color grading or even apply nice looking grades in one click. If you made it to the end, I appreciate you. Feel free to drop a like or a comment and have a great rest of your day.